good evening friends uh, we have with us justice v ram kumar as we all know that once he is here we will have a deeper insights in the perspectives of in the criminal law aspects today also we have an interesting topic with him and as we all know that his passion for taking the topic ahead is always different and his sessions on the live law as well as on beyond law clc you can always watch that today's perspective is can the accused plead guilty after the commencement of trial uh, and we are obliged as usual to justice viram kumar for accepting our invite and thank you sir for accepting our invite thank you mr vikas good evening friends now the question for consideration now that the issue for consideration is in a case where the accused pleaded not guilty to the charge framed against him and the trial started when the in a in a warrant case accused pleaded guilty pleaded not guilty and the trial charge framed the charge was framed against him he pleaded not guilty and the trial started at now the question is at the fag end of the trial whether the accused wants to plead guilty whether he can plead guilty at the fag end of the trial having pleaded not guilty and having permitted the court to start the trial and having called the court called upon the prosecution to examine its witnesses etc now at the fag end of the trial the accused wants to plead guilty whether he can be permitted to do so is our question now when does the trial start there are two types of cases contemplated by the crp that is summons trial summons cases and warrant cases summons cases are those cases which are punishable with imprisonment for for up to 2 years warrant cases are those cases which are punishable with imprisonment exceeding 2 years now in warrant cases there are three categories two of them are tribal by a magistrate one type is warrant cases tribal by a magistrate but instituted on a police report the other category is warrant cases instituted on a complaint again tribal by a magistrate third category of warrant cases is warrant cases tribal by a court of session now um, as you all know in a summons case trial starts when not when the charge is framed there is no framing of charge in a summons case in a summons case after the appearance of the accused when the uh, but substance of the accusation substance of the accusation is stated to the accused by the magistrate and he pleads either guilty or not guilty and if he pleads not guilty the trial starts whereas in warrant cases whether tribal by a magistrate or tribal by a court of session there is a framing of charge when the accused appears the court will frame a charge the magistrate or the session judge will frame a charge against him and the charge will be read over and explained to him in the language known to him and after understanding the charge if the accused voluntarily pleads guilty voluntarily is very important he should know the consequence of pleading guilty and then knowing the consequences if he pleads guilty then the trial starts oh, sorry if he pleads guilty he can be straight away convicted and an appropriate sentence can be imposed on him there is no trial but if he pleads not guilty he will say i don't know i don't i have not committed this offense and pleading not guilty then only the court will call upon the prosecution to prove its case by examining witnesses by producing documents etc so trial in a warrant case starts when the accused pleads not guilty trial in a summons case also starts when the accused pleads not guilty but in a summons case what is read over to the accused is the substance of accusation there is no framing of charge whereas in a warrant case whether tribal by a magistrate or tribal by a court of session there is a framing of charge and the charge will be read over to the accused explain to him and if he voluntarily pleads guilty he can be straight away convicted but if he pleads that if he says that i am not pleading guilty if he pleads not guilty then the trial starts in a warrant case the difference is in a summons case there is no discharge because there is no charge whereas in 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 a warrant trial there is a discharge 
the uh, before framing of charge the accused can plead for a discharge so you the now the we come to the appropriate sections for uh, pleading guilty for uh, for trial and pleading guilty summon case tribal by a magistrate under section 251 crpc the substance of the accusation to be stated to him the magistrate will have to state the substance of accusation to him that is the particulars of the offence will have to be stated to the accused and if he pleads guilty then there is no trial he can be straight away convicted but if he pleads not guilty he can the trial starts now section 252 is the provision which uh, enables the magistrate to convict him on pleading guilty but if he pleads not guilty then the court will call upon the prosecution to prove its case in the case of a warrant warrant case is tribal by a magistrate and instituted on a police report section 240 is the provision 240 crpc is the provision enabling the magistrate to frame charge and on on pleading guilty he can be straight away convicted under section 241 but he pleads not guilty then the trial starts warrant case instituted otherwise than on a police report that is a complaint case private complaint there also the except for the fact that the provision is different under section 256 1 magistrate will frame charge and under section 256 3 the accused can plead guilty and upon that he can, if the magistrate is satisfied that his plea of guilt is voluntarily made he can be straight away convicted but if he pleads not guilty then the trial starts then we come to the last category of warrant cases tribal by a court of session section 228 clause subsection 1 clause b section 228 subsection 1 clause b of crpc enables the session judge to frame a charge against the accused upon appearance the court the court may frame a charge against him and if he pleads guilty there is a provision 229 section 229 which enables the session judge to straight away convict him but normally in sessions offenses being graver offenses which are punishable with uh, uh, extreme sentences courts generally call upon the prosecution to adduce evidence they don't act on the usual even though there is an enabling provision under section 229 crpc session judges normally do not straight away convict him on on pleading on his pleading guilty so when he pleads not guilty then the trial starts now the question which we have to consider is he if the accused pleads guilty there is no problem if he pleads not guilty then he has to the trial has to start, start. now the consequence of accused pleading guilty is that if he pleads guilty and the court is satisfied that he has voluntarily pleaded knowing the fully fully realizing the consequences he has pleaded guilty then he cannot challenge the conviction under section 375 an accused who has pleaded guilty and thereupon the court has convicted him he cannot challenge the conviction no appeal is provided for challenging the conviction the, the finding of guilt cannot be challenged section 375 crpc is the provision the all that he can challenge before an appellate court is the the legality of the sentence the punishment alone he can challenge he cannot say that the court was wrong in convicting me court was wrong in finding me guilty so that is precluded prevented by section 375 crpc now in a summons case tribal by a magistrate what the supreme court cautioned in in mahad kaushalya das versus state of madras ar 1966 supreme court double two ar 1966 supreme court two two corresponding to 1966 criminal law journal 66 1966 criminal law journal page 66 three judges the yeah, author of the judgment is justice ramas swami v ramas swami the they did the observation by the supreme court it is true that in the judgments dated march 22nd 1963 the magistrate has said that the appellant pleads guilty but the record contains no indication whatsoever as to what exactly the appellant admitted before the magistrate 
See, except the magistrate stating in the judgment, in the order or in the proceeding paper that he pleaded guilty, there was nothing discernible. Nothing. There was no record produced to show that he had voluntarily pleaded guilty, knowing fully the consequences of the plea. Whether the the substance of accusation was explained to him, read over and explained to him in the language known to him. These are all the prerequisites for um, substance for reading the substance of accusation. Explain the particulars of the offense. There is nothing. These records were missing. Therefore, the Supreme Court observed that the requirements of, in our opinion, the requirements of Section 243 of Criminal Procedure Code. That was a decision under the 1898 Code, corresponding section of the 1898 Code. In our opinion, the requirements of Section 243 CRP 1898. That is corresponding to 252 of the 73 Code. Uh, are mandatory in character and violation of these provisions vitiates the trial. Violation of those provisions vitiates the trial and renders the conviction legally invalid. So even though there is no appeal provided against a conviction on pleading guilty, if the conviction was um, without satisfying the, the prerequisites of pleading guilty, then the, it vitiates the, even the conviction. So the, the accused would be entitled to Question the conviction even. Vitiate the conviction. They vitiate the trial, render the conviction legally invalid. The requirement of this section is not merely an em empty formality, but a matter of substance intended to secure proper administration of justice. It is important that the terms of the section are strictly complied with because the right of appeal of the accused depends on, upon the circumstances whether he pleaded guilty or not. And it is for this reason that the legislature requires that the exact words used by the accused in his plea of guilty should as nearly as possible be recorded in his own language in order to prevent any mistake or mis misapprehension. There is a similar verdict by uh, the High Court of Kerala speaking through Justice Subramanian Poti in uh, State versus Gopinath Pillai. 1978 KLT 779. That is a case where it was a uh, session trial. It was a session trial, and uh, the, the um, accused had the session judge had recorded that the accused had pleaded guilty, but it was not discernible whether the charge the charge was the charge contained the ingredients of the offense. So the learned judge held that. Even if he, the accused pleads guilty, if the charge does not contain the ingredients of the offense, what he is doing, he is only admitting the fact. He is only admitting the fact, but there is no offense. The ingredients of the offense are missing in the charge. Therefore, just because he has pleaded guilty, you can't convict him because there is no offense made out. Therefore, he is, he, he is entitled to challenge his conviction also. Uh, uh, and Section 375 CRPC is not a bar. Uh, that is what the learned judge said. This is precisely what the Supreme Court also observed that while recording the plea of guilt, unless the magistrate or the session court sat has, is satisfied about the uh, safeguards given to the accused, the, the plea of guilt will not be sustainable. And it may vitiate the trial, entitling the accused to challenge even the conviction. And the, the bar under Section 375 may not apply. The plea of guilt is tantamount to an admission of all the facts constituting the offense. It is therefore essential that before accepting and acting on the plea, the judge must feel satisfied that the accused has admitted all the facts and ingredients constituting the offense. The, all the ingredients of the offense should be there in the substance of accusation or in the charge framed by the court. The plea of the accused must therefore be clear, unambiguous, and unqualified, and the court must be satisfied that the accused has understood the nature of the allegations made against him and has then admitted them. The court must act with caution and circumspection before accepting and acting on the plea of guilt. Once these requirements are satisfied, the law permits the judge trying the case to record a conviction based on the plea of guilt. If, however, the accused does not plead guilty or the learned judge does not act on his plea, he must fix a date for the examination of the witnesses, that is prosecution evidence, 
this is founded on the principle that he this is all an accused pleading guilty and the court convicting him it's all founded on the principle that an admitted fact need not be proved you find the 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 principle enshrined in section 58 of the evidence act section 58 of the evidence act say if an admitted fact need not be proved because he is admitting accused is admitting that he did commit the offence it may be out of a prick of conscience or um, uh, um, he wants to tell the truth before the court therefore he admits that i committed this offence so it is an admitted uh, admission so an admitted it is if it is an admitted fact it need not be proved why should the precious time of the court be be um, wasted in trying to prove an admitted fact he is admitting it therefore the court may not call upon the prosecution to prove the case now even under section 58 of the evidence act there is a proviso which says that in a even uh, where the accused or whoever be there even in civil cases if a fact is admitted not to standing that admission court is given the discretion to ignore the admission and call upon the opposite party to prove the facts de holds such admission so the not withstanding the admission court can call upon the opposite party to prove the facts which is the subject matter of admission likewise even in a case where the accused plead guilty thereby admits his offence court can in a given case ignore the pleading guilty and call upon the prosecution to prove the case but why i we we selected this topic is there is a distressing note in an observation at in paragraph 52 of state of maharashtra versus sukhdev singh ar 1992 supreme court 2100 ar 1992 supreme court 2100 uh, two judges am ahmadi and k ramaswamy justice am ahmadi ordering uh, uh, the judgment this was the famous case arising from the assassination of general vaidya as a retaliation to operation blue star carried out in the golden temple amritsar the 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 according to me the objectionable observation in this judgment is there is nothing in this chapter in the chapter the chapter 18 which prevents the accused from pleading guilty at any subsequent stage of the trial but before the trial judge accepts the and acts on the plea he must administer some caution upon himself the plea of guilt may also be put forward by the accused in the statement record under section 313 crp it is with regard to this statement in the judgment that i have some uh, reservations because as a matter of fact notwithstanding the fact that a5 and a6 they, they were the persons who who subsequently pleaded guilty they had pleaded not guilty and the trial started it is at the fag end of the trial that they pleaded guilty notwithstanding that that pleading guilty in that case they they their conviction was actually entered and sentence passed by the trial court on the basis of the evidence adduced by the prosecution not on the basis of their pleading guilty but this therefore this observation was un- unnecessary and unwarranted the statement in the above verdict that there is nothing in chapter 18 crpc which prevents the accused from pleading guilty or at any subsequent stage of the trial he is really contrary to the scheme under the crpc as per the crpc once trial has started consequent or the accused pleading not guilty there is no power in the court to retrace its steps backwards and go to the pre charge stage and allow the accused to plead guilty in fact we have seen we have seen uh, how adalat prasad versus rupalal jindal ar 2004 supreme court 4674 three judges overruled k m matthew From, which came went from kerala the the corresponding citation is 2004 volume 7 scc 338 three judges just is santosh egade sb sinha and ak mathur it was followed by subramaniam seduraman versus state of maharashtra ar 2004 supreme court 4711 corresponding to 2004 13 scc 324 three judges again so again santosh egade sb sinha and tarun chatterjee the author of both the judgments is justice n uh, sandosh egde in both these cases the supreme court held that once in a criminal trial once the magistrate crosses a particular stage he there is no power of review 
for a criminal court. He cannot retrace his step backwards and come to a previous stage. He is not permissible. That is how K. M. Matthew was overruled by the three-judge bench. Now, the legal position in a warrant case tribal by a magistrate under the corresponding section of 1898 was specifically considered by an earlier three-judge bench decision. In fact, this uh, Sukhdev Singh was, uh, did not notice an earlier three-judge bench decision which was binding on them. That is, Radhilal Banji Mitani versus State of Maharashtra, A. R. 1979 Supreme Court, page 94. A. R. 1979 Supreme Court, 94. Three judges. R. S. Sarkaria, the great judge. R. S. Sarkaria, O. Chinnaparadi, and A. P. Sen. R. S. Sarkaria being the author of the judgment. His lordship, uh, this is what the bench observed in paragraph 28 of Ratilal Banji. Once a charge is framed, the magistrate has no power under section 227 of the 1898 code, corresponding to section 216 of the 1973 code, or any other provision of the code to cancel the charge and reverse the proceedings to the stage of section 253, that is 245 of the CR. 73 code and discharge the accused. So the, once the charge is framed and the trial has started, the magistrate has no power to retrace his step backwards to come to a pre-charge stage. This is what the three judge bench observed in, held in way back in 1979. Now Sukhdev Singh was, this was binding on Sukhdev Singh, but unfortunately they did not notice this and it was not brought to their notice. Sukhdev Singh was in 1992, whereas the other one, the earlier three-judge bench is 1979. Now, uh, after Sukhdev Singh, in fact, before Sukhdev uh, yes, in, in Kerala, in the High Court of Kerala, Santosh versus State of Kerala, 2003, Volume 1 KLT 795, uh, author of the judgment is Justice N. Krishnan Nair. This judge relying on Shyama Charan, uh, in fact, 19, AR 1934, Patna 330, Ram Kishun versus State of UP, that is 1996, Criminal Law Journal 440, Allahabad. Relying on a, a Patna decision and an Allahabad decision, the learned judge held that the court can at any stage allow the accused to withdraw his earlier plea of not guilty and permit him to plead guilty. And that section 229 of the 1898 code corresponding to section 216 of the 1973 code need not need not be given a restricted meaning. In fact, this uh, this Lena judge did not notice Sukhdev Singh, but relying on a Patna decision and Allahabad decision, it was held that he can uh, the court can permit the accused to withdraw his plea of not guilty and allow him to plead guilty at any stage of the proceedings. Uh, this was this was again contrary to the three judge ruling in 1979 Supreme Court, page 94. Now, Sandosh case was really a summary trial in which there was no question of any charge being amended. Se secondly, there also the three judge bench decision of, of Redilal Banji, year 1979 Supreme Court 94, which was not brought to the notice of the learned judge, though it was binding on the learned judge. Subsequently. Another judge, subsequently in Shiny Mulail, Shiny Mulail versus State of Kerala, 2015, volume 3, KLT 263, the author of the judgment is Alexander Thomas, Justice Alexander Thomas, relying on some, the two Patna decision and Sukhdev, the, the Kerala, some, some, Kerala Court decision, earlier decision by Justice Krishna Nair, and Sukhdev Singh also was relied on to hold that the, if the guilt, if the accused is Guilt, uh, admi admitting the guilt at any stage of the trial, even after the commencement of trial, he can be permitted to plead guilty and uh, there is no bar in the CRPC to allow that plea at any stage of the trial after the framing of charge. Here also the scheme under the CRPC has been overlooked, ignoring the binding verdict in Radhilal Banji Mitani, year 1979, Supreme Court, 94. Still later, in paragraph 12 of Rasin Babu versus State of Kerala, 2021, Volume 4, KLT 2222, 2021, Volume 4, KLT 22, Justice V.G. Arun of the Kerala ICO has observed that the dictum laid down in Sandosh requires reconsideration. 
even though this verdict does not take note of Sridhilal Banji, 1979 Supreme Court, 94, and Shai and Shaini Mulai, uh, and also uh, Sukhdev Singh, the principles have been very correctly stated by the learned judge, Justice V. G. Arun of the Kerala High Court, subsequent ruling. This, uh, but uh, un unfortunately, he could not overrule an earlier decision by uh, another judge of the High Court, nor could he. Descend, descend to the two judge bench of the Supreme Court in Sukhdev Singh. That's a Supreme Court judgment. So my conclusion is that even Sukhdev Singh, in, even in Sukhdev Singh, the two judge bench of the Supreme Court failed to consider, or which was binding on A. N. Jatilal Banji was binding on the two judge bench decision. The three judge bench by the uh, Supreme Court, Jatilal Banji, way back in 1979. A year 1979, Supreme Court, page 94. It was not brought to the notice of the two judges. And uh, Sukhdev Singh uh, lays down the law incorrectly. I am therefore of the considered opinion that whether in a summon trial or in a warrant trial or in a session trial, it is not open to the accused to plead guilty after the trial has started, consequent on his pleading not guilty. The magistrate or the judge, as the case may be, is also not entitled to retrace his steps backwards to the pre-charge stage so as to allow the accused to withdraw his earlier plea of not guilty and to plead guilty. So this is an aspect which, had, which I had noted during my uh, um, lectures and during my um, study lectures in the judicial academy. So there's a, every possibility of judges and advocates commit, committing mistakes. So it is not as if after the commencement of trial, he can plead guilty. He can retrace, he can withdraw his earlier claim of not guilty and plead guilty. No, he cannot. 79 Supreme, the scheme of CRPC coupled with 1979 Supreme Court, page 94, prohibits any judge or any lawyer from arguing that the accused can plead guilty after the commencement of trial. After the commencement of trial, the case had to end in a conviction or acquittal, as the case may be. There cannot be any other via media. This is what Adalat Prasad also said. This is what um, Subramaniam Chandrasi also said. Therefore, Sedu Raman, Subramaniam Sedu Raman also said. Therefore, on this exact point, uh, uh, Radhiral Banji Hitani is on the point. Um, for, for, so long as that three judge ruling, that is also rendered under under the 1973 court, present court. Therefore, that decision is binding on all courts in India, unless and until it is overruled. As long as the provisions in the CRPC remain the same, it cannot be overruled also. They have, they have very, Justice Sarkari has very beautifully explained the position in Redilal Banji. It is binding on all courts. I only wanted this to, to be brought to your notice. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'm quite sure that people will understand as to in all the trials, sessions, warrant and summons, what is the position in respect of this fact as to whether the accused can plead guilty after the commencement of trial. Thank you for sharing your knowledge and keep blessing us with your knowledge as well as the voice. Thank you.